Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy you're here. Today I want to share this super fun double slider card with you. And as you can see, it's actually an opposite slider action where the mouse jumps into the pile of leaves and just the leaves fly everywhere. So if you want to know how I did this, you actually don't need any specialty dies, then just keep on watching. First, I stamped all of my images from the You Autumn No stamp set from Lawn Fawn onto Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper, and I'm using my Copic markers to color them in. For my yellows, I'm using Y17, Y13, oh, Y15, Y13, and Y11, and I actually ended up not using the uh, like completely yellow leaves. I just ended up adding like a little bit of yellow to the edges of leaves so that they look like the colors are changing, but I didn't want them to be like completely yellow. For my greens, I'm using BG96, YG67, 63, and 61. For my reds, I'm using RV69 as my darkest shade, or it's like purplish pink color, not red. Um, RV66 and RV63. Adding a little bit more of the RV69 where the leaves are overlapping. Then again with the RV66 and finally filling in the rest with RV63. And for my final color combination, I'm using a, like a reddish pink color. Uh, I'm using R59 as my darkest shade, then R85, R83, and R81. Again going over the colors a second time just to deepen up the shadows where the leaves are overlapping and on the like bottom edge. And then I realized I didn't want the leaves to be colored just one color. So I went ahead and just added a bunch of shading with like the yellow and the orange to all of the leaves. And I did that off camera because I was kind of experimenting. Um, but I just basically added a little bit of the yellow into the pink or the, the green, just so that there's like a nice fall leaf transition. For my cute little mouse, I'm using E40 markers, and I'm just mapping out where I think I want the darkest areas to be. So I'm just using a pretty light marker, the E42, just to see where I want to add the shadows before actually going in with the dark shade, just so that I don't mess up the coloring, because I really struggle with where to place the shadows. So. This is really, really helpful to kind of gauge how it will look. Then I'm going in with E44, then E43, just blending them out, pulling the color in a little bit further. But I wanted my mice to still be pretty light, so I'm not dragging out the E43 very far. Then I'm using little strokes to push the color out a little bit further with the E42 which is quite a bit lighter and is the marker I used when I mapped out the shadows. Then I wanted there. I wanted the image to be a tiny bit more defined, so I'm going in with E47 just a little bit in the very very darkest areas where like under the arms, the like shaded side of the face because he's facing the other way like below the chin where the right foot overlaps the body just in those areas and then I'm blending that out with the E44 and the E42 and then I'm blending that out with E41 and finally with E40 I'm adding a little bit of blush and color to the cheeks with R30. Again, going over that with the uh, uh, E41 and then E40. And I colored in the nose with the 
E47 because I forgot to do that before. And I'm just making sure that the transition is smooth and going over once more with the E40 and E42. For the rake, I'm using E44, uh, E47, E44, E42 and E40. And I'm using some neutral grays for the like metal part. I'm using N5, N1 and N0. And the little mouse up top above the rake is actually from the You Are Just My Type stamp set. And the rest of the images are from You Autumn Know. Now let's move on to the mechanism. And for this one, you need a piece of a rectangle piece of cardstock, the height that you want your slider to be. Uh, for this one, I used a piece of acetate and a piece of cardstock for my slider. I actually used the flippy flappy uh, like pull tab piece so that it's a nice finished edge. And you also need a piece of plastic. It's actually uh, this one is from some packaging from Shaker pouches from MFT and also some double-sided tape. Tape runner isn't strong enough for this. So I'm just using some scissors to cut slits into on the right and left side of my rectangle piece. And then I'm just cutting off between the two cuts. So you have a little like indent. And what you want to do is basically create a track for your plastic to slide around. Doing the same on the other side. And for this one, this it doesn't have to be exact at all. As you'll see me actually trimming off the like little notches a little bit at the end as well. You just want to have them tall enough so that your piece of plastic can slide off. Now I'm lining up my plastic, making sure I have the right width. And I didn't, so I need to trim off a little bit extra, just using my guillotine trimmer. Placing it around the track, just to make sure that it fits smoothly, doesn't slide around too much, or you'll have like a wiggle in afterwards. So cut it basically to fit not too tight but also not too loose and I'm just adding some score tape to the end of my plastic uh, for this one you can use some packaging plastic like a, a freezer bag some people use dog poop bags anything like that will work wrap it around the track remove the backing paper of the double-sided adhesive and don't wrap it too tight. You want a little bit of movement there so that it runs around the, or moves around the little track that we created easily. But you don't want a ton of room. So just like I did here, as you can see, I can move the plastic around easily, but like you don't have a lot of wiggle room. Now I'm just using my scissors to cut off any of the excess. And that little seam, as you can see, it can slide over the edge. So just make sure that it's at the bottom or top, whatever you prefer. Just one side, and then you add another strip of adhesive over top. Then you flip the mechanism up or down, and you place another strip of cardstock in the exact same place on the other side. So now when you flip them sideways, the adhesive is actually on opposite sides of the like little track piece. I'm adding my piece of acetate to the strip of adhesive, just making sure that it lines up. And I'm just lining that up with the bottom edge of my track piece because this one I actually cut a little bit short. But since that is the one sliding up and not where we're pulling, in this case, it doesn't matter. Then I'm just flipping it over 
just checking to see which direction I need to adhere it because this panel goes in exactly the opposite direction of the other side. So that when we pull on this, the other side moves up. In my case, the stitched panel is the one that we're going to be pulling on. So I added a second layer of the stitched panel just to reinforce it. And I'm snipping off any of the excess of the little track pieces, making sure there's enough that the plastic can slide off. But uh, I need it to be flush with the stitched panel so I can actually line it up flush with the edge of my card later on. And that way you have easy access to the pull tab once the card is assembled. It's a bit hard to move it because the cardstock kind of bends, but the mechanism works really, really easily now. I'm using the outside in stitched rectangles, the largest size, to cut a stitched panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I'm using Distress Oxide inks for my background. And this is actually an entry to the current Lawn Fanatics challenge, which is Spectacular Skies with a fall themed image. And this one actually shows like a beautiful crisp blue sky with like orange fall leaves. Um, but the challenge is to you make a sky like that or anything that you would consider a spectacular sky. And I wanted to match the sky kind of to the leaf colors that I used uh, for the images. And I really, really like those bold skies for fall. For me, this is kind of the only time of year where I actually like to use like oranges and yellows a lot. So I wanted to make use of that for this card as well. So. I'm trying to make it really bold with the seedless preserves. So I started with squeezed lemonade, then blended it into dried marigold, which is more of a pale orange. I didn't want it to be like too pumpkin-y. Pretty sure that's not a word, but I think you know what I mean. Just blending the colors back and forth. Then to bring in some of the like pink shade, I'm using uh, worn lipstick. And to bring in the purple violet, I'm using uh, Seedless Preserves. And Worn Lipstick and Seedless Preserves work really, really well together, I think. And yeah, once I was happy with the blend, I'm just adding some splatters of Seedless Preserves and also of Liquid Stardust. I just added a little bit of water to the Liquid Stardust and to the Seedless Preserves, and I'm adding lots of splatters. And I would like to know what is your favorite color combination for like a background for fall. I feel like those kind of warm tones is like the perfect season to use them, but I would like to know what your favorite ink blend colors are. I actually forgot to record this particular part. I die cut the uh, stitched hillside borders and I also ink blended those with shabby shutters and mowed lawn. I did that off camera, not on purpose, but since I did the exact same thing as before, I didn't think it was so bad that I forgot to rec hit record. I just added some splatters of mowed lawn and forest moss. And then it's time to add my mechanism. As you can see, I added three additional strips of acetate and those will be the parts that will have my images on them. Let me just zoom in really quick so you can see better. I added one strip of acetate to the stitched panel and two strips of acetate to the clear acetate piece. Here you can see I just used double sided adhesive for this one as well. And I added those three strips, one to the front that will move down as I pull and the two strips on the clear acetate piece will move up when I pull. Off camera I adhered my two hillside borders together and I use the Let's Toast not pull tab notch piece to create my little notch. And I'm keeping both pieces because I will add this to the like pull tab. I added foam tape to the sides of my track, both front and back and on either side, just to make sure that it has enough wiggle room to move freely. I just removed the backing paper and I line it up with the bottom of my card. 
and then I just added some foam tape to my hill panels, making sure to not add any foam that could get in the way of my mechanism moving. And I just add, place that down, making sure that my slider moves. And here you can see the middle acetate strip moves down while the sides move up, which is exactly what we want for a little mouse jumping into the leaves. Here I'm just adding a little bit of liquid glue and I'm just popping in this little piece so that I would have the nice stitching edge all the way around. And now it's already time to add my images. I'm adding most of them with uh, either double-sided adhesive or glue dots because I find that this is the easiest way to adhere them to the acetate because liquid glue on acetate takes ages to dry. Then I'm just adding some leaves to the acetate strips and I'm trimming off any excess that would show um, like going beyond the, the leaves. Just adding them to the side, making sure that it looks nice and full that the pile of leaves is almost gone and that the um, the sides like look like the leaves are actually flying around. I'm just playing around with the placement of everything. I wanted to add the speech bubble there but then I realized that I didn't quite know how far down I would have to adhere my sentiment strip. So I'm going to jump on to doing that next before I do anything else. I use a black strip of cardstock and I'm heat embossing my sentiment from the You Autumn No. And it actually reads You Autumn No. <laughs> and I'm just heat embossing that in white. I used my Versamark ink pad and some anti-static powder tool to prep my cardstock. I stamped it with Versamark and now I'm adding the Wow embossing powder in the uh, opaque bright white and super fine. Off to the side my heat gun was already heating up and now I'm just running it over the powder, uh, the panel until the powder is smooth and melted. And to cut down my sentiment strip I always like to use my guillotine trimmer making sure that the powder is cooled and I'm not smudging anything. And I'm always using the plastic piece of my trimmer to uh, cut my sentiment strips. I'm just lining up the letters with the edge of the plastic and that way you get a beautifully cut sentiment strip, always straight and it's just so easy to do. And now I'm stamping the second part of my sentiment. The front reads you autumn know and the inside will read I believe in you and I colored an additional little mouse and leaf to just go on the inside because I just thought that would be super cute to have the like a belief in you on the inside. Then I die cut one of the scalloped rectangles and I'm adding that to the card base. And now it's time to add my ink blonded panel. I'm just using liquid glue because that actually gives me some gives me a little bit of wiggle room because I'm really really bad at adhering things straight <laughs> so this way I can just shimmy it around until it's like where it needs to be and here you can already see the effect that it will have and I just think it's so fun to have the little mouse moving then it's time to fill up the rest of my scene I'm adding a leaf to the one mouse that's flying away a second pile of leaves and I decided to add the wee speech bubble to the one that's already flying. I'm adding most of the images with liquid glue and just a few of them with foam squares. And this mouse, I, it just cracks me. I thought it was so cute. I'm just giving him the rake and he's just like staring at the others like, like this, this grumpy little mouse, like kids get off my lawn. And he just wants to clean up. He already has this beautiful pile of leaves and the others are just playing. And I just think it's so funny. I know it's weird that I tell like little stories with my cards, but 
I'm just having the best time making this. Then I'm also adding the little happy mouse that's playing with the leaves. So I'm adding that with thin foam squares. Two more leaves just going there. Then I'm adding my little wee speech bubble, which I think is just so cute. And for the sentiment, I'm also adding some thin foam squares on the back just so that it has a little bit of dimension. And I'm making sure that I place it so that it doesn't get away of the mechanism, that the mouse won't like, hit its head on the sentiment strip. Just making sure that there is enough space and that it's straight, which is always a challenge for me. Adding some liquid glue to the speech bubble. Way too much liquid glue, actually. And then I wanted to add the like little swirly, stitched swirl stamp from the You Autumn Know stamp set. And I just had to remove the little grumpy mouse there for a second. And I just stamped it with a block. And this is like instant regret because it didn't stamp all the way. And I knew I should have used my Misty, especially once the card was like basically finished. But oh well, you learn. And I had the idea to just use a pencil and I just dipped it into the seedless preserves and filled in the missing stitch lines. And that actually worked better than I thought it would. And so, yeah. That turned out okay in the end. But next time I will use my stamping tool because this is just, no, no. Didn't want to ruin the card. I also die cut the little arrow piece from the Let's Toast pull tab die set, just so that the recipient will know that there's something to do. And of course, also added the little grumpy mouse. And that finishes off my card for today. Here you can see the beautiful shine from the liquid stardust and oh my god, those mice just look so f happy just playing with the, with the leaves. Except, of course, the little grumpy mouse who just wants to clean up, but we're just not going to bother him. And there you can see the little mouse just going up and down with a pile of leaves. And I think, oh my god, this is just so fun. I've had this card on my desk and I've just been playing with it. Because it's fun. <laughs> And then, of course, the sentiment, you really autumn know. And of course, you can add anything inside there, but the I believe in you. Oh my god, I love punny sentiments. Just so fun with the little extra mouse there. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I know this was a long one, so if you stuck around, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing for more crafty videos. I'm trying to keep them coming more regularly now. I did have to take some time off, but I'm back and I'm so excited to be. I have lots and lots of holiday crafts planned, so stick around for that. And I hope I'll see you again next time. Until then, have an amazing day. Bye!